All right, so if you're applying early, I put up a couple of uh, slides here to show you what to expect and, and a couple of things that I've been running into working with my students over the last two weeks, some kind of common questions that we're dealing with, what to submit and what to do after if you are applying early. So firstly, when you are working on your Common App, which is the main application system my students are working with, I know there's also Georgetown for early action and MIT, um, but for the most part, Common App, they're going to be giving you green check marks to indicate that you've completed filling out all the required questions. Required questions in the main app are going to be signified with a red asterisk. It's kind of small. So if you're kind of going crazy, like some of my students wondering, I don't have a green check mark, Jay, what's going on? It's usually because there's a red asterisk or something that you're missing that you have to fill out. But once you get all your green check marks on your profile, your you know uh, education, um, you copy paste it in your personal statement, et cetera. Uh, you should see green check marks all the way. And that means you're ready to submit for the main Common App. What I've been working a lot on, a couple of issues I've been dealing with and seeing is personal statement. Some students will copy paste their personal statement from their Google Doc or, or their Word Doc where they've been working on it and drafting on it. And then when they copy paste it over to a personal statement, uh, they'll see that it's bolded. Like when you copy paste it, automatically bolts. If you use special characters, maybe you're using a foreign language like Korean or Chinese, uh, and when you copy paste it over, that may not translate. It might end up giving you a bunch of garble and stuff. So please, 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 once you, uh, to, to avoid this, to be sure to be clean about this, make sure that when you do copy paste things over, you go to the top of that section and you click preview. And when you click preview, that view is how you should expect admission readers to, to see your application. So one of the things addition, additionally I've noticed is that when you put spaces between paragraphs in your essays, the Common App automatically includes a space between paragraphs. So when you're adding that extra space, the space between the paragraphs become massive. So again, check preview. How it looks on preview should be the gold standard for you. Um, I've been also helping with additional information for the same reason. Additional information, guys, is not a place to just splur, like dump everything. It, it, you got to make sure that the admission reader is going to be willing to read it. There's, they're going to see there's value in reading it uh, and there's organization so that you're not making it difficult for them to extract value out of all the things you're trying to additionally mention. Activity descriptions, I've been spending a lot of time on that. That's 150 characters. I would saturate it to the max. Uh, 100 characters for the title and organization. Um, yeah, just I've seen a lot of students who received good coaching for activity descriptions and you could tell right away versus the students who don't uh who, who didn't uh other than that awards honors that's also 100 characters i believe for the descriptions there so how you describe it can can make the difference uh the, when i review the the application as a whole once you have all the green check marks for the common app and you're ready to submit you then have to move over to the My Colleges and look at the individual earlies that you're trying to apply to they have their own set of supplemental questions uh, you have to obviously do the FERPA, make sure that the teacher recommendations are all connected to your app. If you're using Naviance or another school third-party platform, you should have been advised by now of how that process is going to link to your Common App or your other applications. One of the things I've noticed that students who are applying early, let's say applying early decision to Columbia or early decision to UPenn, uh, they forgot about uh, once you choose early decision as your choice, uh, the FERPA updates, that section with the letter rec updates to have a parent um, uh, early decision agreement. So you have to sign that or invite your parent and your parents have to sign that before you submit. Some schools will also ask for resumes. I've been getting a lot of questions about that. <clears throat> if they ask me for a resume, should I be uploading it? Isn't it repetitive, Jay, with the, the 10 activities or, and the five honors that I put down already? It is repetitive, but it's okay. If your resume is professional looking, it's clean, it has a little bit more description, uh, I'm not afraid to send a resume that looks impressive and comprehensive, even if 80%, 90% of it overlaps with uh, your uh, things you already put into your application. The resume is just to me like a professional student passport. And it's always good to, to if you have the opportunity and you're pretty confident in your resume build right now to upload that. Other than that, uh, you want to make sure that out of all the things, Jay, what do I need to make sure I'm sending? It's the high school transcript. So you got to make sure that your high school counselor is aware of what earlies you're, you're gunning for. And uh, there's you got to be sure that they are sending in the transcript or at least postmark aiming to send the transcript by the deadline. 
test scores at school specific. I think two videos ago, I posted uh, sending score reports along with the UCLA engineering data. Uh, if you check that out, I put a spreadsheet for which schools require official score reports to be submitted by postmark deadline uh, versus others that just will take your uh, word for it with the self-report that you put onto your Common App. And then later on, when you get accepted and in, in officially uh, SIR to the school in May, that's when they'll ask for it to confirm. So if you're not sure of whether you need to send a test score or not, this has become a lot a lot more colleges, I'd say like 80, 90, maybe even 95% of schools will allow you to, for now, just self-report. You don't have to pay the 12 extra dollars or whatever for a college board or ACT student to send the score. Um, I think the exception to that, Princeton and a couple of other schools. So go ahead and check that out. I'll provide the spreadsheet link below in this video. I tell my students, I want to be ready to aim to submit by uh, the 28th. Does that mean you should submit by the 28th? You know, I, I want you to just be ready. Like if you if you had to click the submit button by the 28th, you should be able to do so. You can then buy yourself three days or of, of just just in case reviewing, you know, every night, checking with your parents, uh, whatever you got to do there. But be ready to submit by the 28th. That should be the goal. That's what I've been begging all of my students to set as their goal. Other than that, uh, the question I get about this is, Jay, is there an advantage to submitting it earlier than the deadline? And my general answer is no. Uh, if you are applying for rolling admissions, then absolutely it's helpful. But if they give you a November 1st deadline, is there a difference that I've seen between a student who submits it, you know, October 15th versus October 29th? No, no. So technically you have up until the deadline. Please be advised if you're really going to cut it close, like Jay, is it deadline like East Coast? If it's an East Coast school, is it deadline like West Coast? So it's Pacific time. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, you can look up each individual school to check that out. But if you're really kind of pushing it to that limit, what are you doing? What are you doing, you potato? Make sure that you're ready by the 28th so they don't have to deal with those kinds of dilemmas. With that being said, what if my transcript or test score report is late? So long as you postmarked and you gave ample time, you know, you can prove from your end that, hey, I, I requested that like a, a, a two weeks ago. And if it's not on you, the colleges aren't going to penalize you for it. They're not going to hold you accountable. So usually as a result of that, because sometimes teachers submit late, whatnot, they'll just see when you assign the teacher to your application for a rec request. Um, and other times they'll just wait one, two weeks after deadline. So all the way up until the second week of November, uh, they, they may just hold you to a uh, status report saying they haven't received it yet. You can still submit and you're not going to be, you know, discarded as an applicant for the first two weeks of waiting for a transcript or a rec letter that is not your fault in terms of it being late or, or delayed. So you can always update colleges, but not every school is every school is different in terms of how they're going to adjudicate that. So what I mean by this last kind of you can always send an update to colleges with additional materials. I should have put an asterisk there because it depends on the college. Uh, but Jay, if my transcript or test score report is going to come after November 1st, am I dis disqualified? 99% of the time, no, you're fine. As so long as your essays are in, so long as you postmark things before. And if it's clear that there's some administrative delay or something on not on your end, then you should be fine. What if my recommendations letters are not complete by then? Same thing. Uh, I think I, I, I jumbled the two slides here together. Uh, so long as they, they keep a postmark on when you assigned a teacher to your supplemental application. If you go to your FERPA section, you'll be able to see that. So again, if you invited them with quote unquote ample time, let's say two weeks before deadline, maybe even one week before deadline, then it's not a problem for you to submit, though the rec letters are still incomplete. Your job is to submit all of your tasks by November 1st, and then the teachers kind of get that one to two leak way. Uh, leeway to to uh, finish that up. So I give a soft reminder for, you know, when my students are saying, hey, I'm kind of panicking here because my teachers have not updated or completed the, the invitation. I invited them a month ago, Jay. And I've been running into a lot of that. It's okay. You don't have to worry. Um, by November 1st, if they still don't complete it, it's kind of annoying, but it's not a big deal for you. You're not going to be disqualified. I think at that point, you should provide a soft reminder. I mean, even before November 1st, I think this week, if you're seeing that they're not completing it on time or haven't completed it yet, 
I would send them a soft reminder. And there's an example. Thank you once again for writing me a recommendation. I just wanted to let you know that I've submitted my app, intend to submit my app by the 28th. And I'm excited because I have your letter as support. Thank you so much. And then if you want to slap on a $20 Starbucks gift card, that usually sends it, uh, tends to incentivize and resolve the problem immediately uh, for most cases. You don't want to be going in saying, where is my letter? I demand my letter to be sub submitted. I've had parents before, like kind of lose it and like send this like tirade of an email to teachers and faculty. And then that just turns the entire situation sour. Um, and, and I think if they just knew and listened to what I'm telling you guys now that it's all right, give it one to two weeks. Um, you're not going to be penalized. It's not going to be bad for you as long as they complete it. Um, then I think they could have avoided a lot of, of sour sentiments that I think ultimately made it so that the teachers didn't write that strongly for that student. What do I do after I submit? So um, first confirm that you've submitted. I've had instances in the past where students thought they submitted and then I go on to check and it's like still not submitted. Oh, you do not want to be that student. Okay, so make sure that you've successfully submitted. You'll get a confirmation. The dashboard on your Common App will showcase it. Um, oftentimes, they'll invite you, the, the college you submitted early to, they'll, submit, they'll email you a post-app portal invitation. So they'll either email you or you follow the website instructions after post-submission, and they'll give you kind of a login, uh, an account. You'll create an account, and it becomes kind of this status portal where you can see the status of all your application um, uh, elements. So that's where you want to start spending, I don't know, 10 minutes a day just checking in on uh, for the next two weeks. Regularly log into your post submission portal to review your app status. The reason why you want to do that is for one, th usually the portal will tell you where your, what your current status is for, let's say the transcripts. Had the transcripts been uh, received yet? Has your letters of rec been received yet? So it's good to be constantly checking that, especially if you realize that those weren't all in by deadline. The other thing is that you may end up getting special requests. So sometimes an admission officer may um, uh, say, hey, we really need this. You have two weeks to respond to this. And I think students, once they, once they submit November 1st, say, I'm done. And they, they like ignore it for two weeks. And then when they finally realize, oh, wait, there's a portal? oh, wait, they've been asking me for something for the last two weeks. That's a big, big no-no scenario. So uh, I advise all my students, check your post-submission portal, whatever they offer you regularly, every day for the, the next two weeks after deadline. You want to then start preparing for interviews. In fact, some of the schools will, right after you submit, provide you a link to go directly into interview procedures. And then some of them even still will give you these hidden or extra supplemental submissions, like for example, a video supplement, I think Brown perhaps. Um, and then you also want to start looking into scholarships. Uh, but the last thing is don't expect to get in early. Uh, don't assume, assume you won't get accepted early and proceed to regular application essays and applications. Um, you need to realize that in general, an early acceptance rate to let's say a tier one, tier two school is sub 20%, sub 15%. The chances are not high. You'll likely be deferred. In which case, if you're applying to 15 other colleges, you know, you're waiting until December 15th for the results. I actually have a calendar here. Let me show you. So let's say your first three weeks, first two weeks of November, you want to check your post application portal daily. Uh, and then the last two weeks or so of that, uh, you, the next two weeks of that, you want to just make sure that everything is submitted. I think if you are struggling to get uh, everything completed and submitted by like, let's say November 17th, you might have a problem there. Usually the first two weeks, the third week being kind of the latest stretch for getting everything in. You then will wait for your results. The results will come out around December 15th for most schools. Sometimes it might come in earlier, maybe a little bit later. So once the results come out, um, as I was mentioning, if you're like a 15% chance for a, a tier one school, you should expect to get deferred. You should expect to get rejected. If you get accepted, congrats. But assume the worst and start realizing immediately you need to get into high gear because the regular deadlines, if you're applying to 15 schools, January 1st to 15th, that's a lot of essays and applications you have to do in that regular deadline rush window, which is... Uh, during most students' winter breaks, um, the last two weeks of December, that's when it gets really hectic if students are 
uh, delaying on working on their other applications, assuming that they'll get in early. So look out for interview requests. As I mentioned before, it's usually in the signup portals. And then hope for the best, prepare for the worst. So prepare for deferral. Uh, I may have to post and mock something up about how deferrals work in the future. Understand rejection procedures and how you can appeal rejections. Um, spoiler alert, rejection appeals are extremely rare and like 99.999% of the time, it's, it's probably a no-go. So I have to often do meetings where parents uh, and students are super devastated by getting rejected from their early choice. And I have to lay kind of the reality to them that you have to move on. You, a lot of students and parents read about rejection appeal. And guys, in my experience, it's, it's, it's extremely rare. So rejections to me tell me you move forward. When you get rejected from your early, unless you were advised that to absolutely kind of expect that, that you were going for a YOLO shot, if you are surprised, like, Jay, I didn't even, I thought I was playing a little bit safe and I got rejected to the school, you know, that may raise some concerns. Like if you're talking to someone getting advice about that, um, if I see that a student of mine early um, that wasn't going for a YOLO type of thing, was going for something strategic and instead of getting deferred as we expected or even accepted, got rejected, you know, that may bring up uh, um, a point of conversation that I would want to have with that student and parent of what's going on here. Maybe we need to adjust the essays. Maybe we need to adjust this. Other times... <laughs> I've seen parents and students overreact. We got rejected. Oh my God, what are we going to do? And it turns out they were YOLOing to Stanford with like a 3.8, you know, and, and like a 1450. So then they think then they overreact. They think that we have to work on essays again. We have to rewrite everything. We have to reorganize our activities. We have to rechange our, our major strategy and choose different majors. But this is where you need that calm, assertive, experienced eye to tell you we expected this versus... We didn't expect this. It's worthy of us to reevaluate, start looking at some tweaks that we can make for the regular process. So I often look at um, early's as kind of a litmus test for some students. At the same time, some parents and students don't use it as a litmus test. They try to go for a YOLO dream school. And we just need to make sure we're managing expectations and, and how to react to the results that, that come. Uh, plan out a weekly progress schedule to prepare the remaining regular applications. So this is for my students. Students, it is one of the most tempting things to submit your early November 1st and then just like let loose. Just for two weeks, binge on Netflix. You know, parents like, hey, shouldn't you be working on your regular? Mom, I finished it all. Let me relax. <laughs> and then you guys end up like kind of getting, getting your step, um, like falling behind because what I would advise is once you submit November 1st, assume the worst, assume you'll get deferred or perhaps unfortunately rejected and realize you have about two or you have about eight weekends before then the, um, before then the regular deadlines come up. So if you are applying to, let's say 16 more colleges, uh, let's say you apply to two earlies or three earlies. So up to 20 total schools. Think, do, just do the math there. If you just committed to doing two colleges, recycling essays, let's create a draft, um, let's fill out the questions, uh, application questions. If you do two per week, that's 16 colleges before by uh, December 1st. Let me fix that. So compare that to what I see kind of uh, other students doing, which is they YOLO hope for not yellow. They hope for a good result and they don't respect the statistics and they get, let's say, deferred. That happens a lot. Um, and then they have this two week regular deadline rush window from December 17th to December 31st to write 16 colleges, regular applications and essays. That is insane to me. That That is super stressful. You should avoid doing that at all costs. Do not be, be humble. Assume that you'll get the worst and prepare accordingly. So my kind of formula for that is at minimum, try to stay consistent, uh, hit the essay gym, hit the college application gym, uh, try to knock out two per weekend, and you should feel much better about uh, yourself when it gets to December and you have to open up the acceptance email. Other than that, what am I missing here? Yeah, I hope that this was helpful. Uh, I am noticing 
uh, a couple of other people or I've been getting a lot of requests for different types of essay guides and I see it. I'm going to try to work on those. I have to prioritize my students first. Um, so this is, I mean, even this video here, I wanted to give out for my admission master students. Hey guys, what's up? It's your counselor, Jay. Please, please, please make sure that you guys are not, uh, being, uh, procrastin not procrastinating. Uh, that's my main concern for my students. Otherwise, I think I mentioned everything I need to say. Alrighty, guys. Until next time, I'll see you guys.